Hey YouTube, it's Richard from Small Batch Brew. First YouTube video here for the new channel. We uh, just got the Robo Brew in from Williams Brewing. Been selling them in Australia for a while, and uh, they finally started importing it to the U.S. I decided against the grandfather. This was half the price, and it's pretty much the same machine, I think. So let's see what's in the box. This is the box. Cool picture of a robot um, holding a mash paddle and some barley. Could you see it? Instruction sheet comes with it, and it's a bunch of eight and a half by eleven pieces of paper with some pictures. That's nice. Interesting. Very small. Operation, I guess, for the Robo Brew from Keg King, Keg King in Australia. That's who makes this this thing. It looks like it's packaged pretty well. Williams Brewing throws in. Um, it doesn't. Most of what I've read said it doesn't come with a piece of silicone for the recirc pipe, but it looks like Williams Brewing throws one in, so that goes for the recirculation too. The lid is in the top of the box. Looks like it's nice glass lid, um, which has two handles. I don't think the grandfather has handles, so this is nice for taking the lid off the Robo Brew. Got some more pieces of cardboard, and inside, I figured this is what was jangling around, um, the immersion chiller that comes with the Robo Brew. Uh, it doesn't have a counterflow chiller. It's just an immersion chiller and it looks like it's stainless, maybe aluminum. It's not copper, so the first immersion chiller I've ever seen is not copper. Anyway, I don't have any way to hook that up to my sink, so I probably won't use it. This is uh, the sparge, or the recirculation arm uh, that the hose attaches to. Recirculate your work. And there, we've got some pieces of plastic. We call this the mash. I forget what Kev King calls it, but it's like the mash um, canister where all your grains will go while you're mashing. Nice silicone ring, so it fits nicely and uh, has the feet, so that it'll rest on the oil kettle portion while you're sparging, so it'll drain everything nicely. I believe there's a bottom portion to this. Um, shark. Um, I've read some things and seen some things on YouTube about little pieces of machining, little metal fragments because from the machining and the cutting, but I haven't really seen any of that yet. Now here's the bottom. Um, screen for the bottom and the actual guts of the operation. Waterproof housing. Here's your um, recirculation pipe with a shutoff valve right here, so you can shut off that. Uh, it has handles. It has handles so you can move it around um, while you're using it potentially. Something else the grandfather um, doesn't have, from what I've seen. Um, the new panel, from the, opposed to the old Robo Brew panels, they put it all in this enclosed um, plastic. The buttons are nicer, so if work boils over, drips down here, it's not gonna. Um, ruin your 
controller, your temperature controller and your screen. It's all pretty much waterproof now, and it looks pretty, looks pretty nice. Here's your um, element controller for a 1,000 watt and a 500 watt, so if you're just mashing or if you're trying to bring it up to a boil quicker, you can go turn both elements on or just use one of the elements to keep your temperatures lower. It is all, um, there are measurements for liters and gallons on the inside as well as on the outside, so they're just kind of stamped in there. And then, yeah, the heating elements on the bottom. The pump is enclosed as opposed to um, other versions of this device. The pump is all in the, the bottom housing there. So that's that. And then, so a few more accessories. Um, oh, this is the handle for, to pull out the mash basket. So put this in there. That's the handle. Pull that out. And then in this box, I think it's probably the sparge tube that goes down in through the green bed. Um, the screens and probably the silicone rings for the screens, which are here. fit nicely. Another screen. Pretty sharp. Be careful with those. So that's what the silicone tubing is partly for. And these are all the tubes for um, your mesh circulation. And the little rubber stopper that goes on the top while you're pouring in your greens so you don't pour greens down the tube and into the heating element area. So, I heard a lot of people lose this, but you can just cover it with something else if you do. And just be careful not to pour greens, grains down the tube, whichever way it goes. But so that's the Robo Road. Looks like it's all you know. It's nice stainless parts. Look like they're pretty well machined. Um, I haven't really seen anything machining uh, oils or anything like that on anything. But I'm gonna run some OxyClean through it, get it nice and clean. And then the next video will probably be a first brew day on the Robo Brew, so stay tuned, smallbatchbrew.com, check us out, and uh, like the video, subscribe, thanks.